to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ god said if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves will pray and will seek me i'll forgive their sin i'll heal their land second chronicles 7 verse number 14. we welcome you today to our study of the beautiful book of Second Chronicles. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. We want to encourage you to have your Bible, to locate your Bible, get it ready, as we're going to look to the Word of God with some practical lessons from the book of Second Chronicles. As always, today's lessons are being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Churches of Christ. The Church of Christ in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether it be on Sunday morning or Wednesday, they'd be happy to have you as a guest. You'll find people there who are friendly, who love God, and who insist that we must go by what the Bible says and reach out with a heart of compassion and love. And so if you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about the Scripture, you'd like to have an in-home Bible study, you'll find people in the Lord's Church who are happy to do that. Friend, we also want to help you in your study of the Word of God here at the Gospel of Christ. Won't you check out our website? We have a plethora of good Bible study material. We've got video lessons on all the books of the Bible and a multitude of topical lessons audio lessons, transcripts, written material, and it's all available to you free of charge. You can access it 24-7 free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, just visit our media request form. You can get an instant digital download or we can send you a DVD or CD free of charge. We'll even cover the shipping in doing that. And so check us out. Check out our apps that are available for the mobile phones today. Those are a great way to study the Word of God as well. Let's direct our attention to the book of 2 Chronicles as we're going to think today about this great book of restoration and worship. The ideas that we find are the dramatic revival that's going to occur through some of the good kings that are found in 2 Chronicles. And then, of course, some of the kings there were not as good as well. And so kind of the key ideas are that of restoration and worship. We find one of the key phrases is that they Josiah prepared his heart. Hezekiah would prepare his heart to seek God and to follow Him in every way. And of course, we have great kings like Josiah, who from a young age did the will of God. Let me take just a moment to break down the book into three categories or a couple of categories that will help us understand it better. Uh, chapters 1 through 9 of 2 Chronicles, we're dealing with the reign of Solomon. Then chapters 10 through 36, it's kind of the road to captivity. It's the tragic decline of the Israelite nation until they eventually go into captivity. And while 1 Chronicles that we studied recently would be a supplement to 2 Samuel, 2 Chronicles is more of a supplement to what occurs in 1 and 2 Kings. And so here are some of the practical living messages that we find from 2 Chronicles. As you read chapters 1 through 9, we hear about Solomon, we hear about his reign, and, and we see that magnificent temple that Solomon builds. Sometimes we, we walk away and we're so impressed with the building and the edifice and, and all the glory and splendor of that that we fail to realize a very important truth. Today, God's not dwelling in temples made with hands. Think about the thousands upon thousands, thousands of dollars that have been spent to beautify and make some beautiful edifice today. And that's not what God's asking for today. Acts chapter 7 verses 48 through 50, the Bible says, God does not dwell 
in temples made with hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. What house shall you build for me, says the Lord? Has not my hand made all these things? God doesn't dwell in, in handmade temples today. Where does God dwell? 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. Do you not know that the Spirit of God dwells in you and that we are God's children today? God dwells within His people as we live for Him, as we follow His Word, and as we try to get out and do the work that God wants us to do. And so when you think about today how this applies, let's realize we are. Our bodies are the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. And we want to use those to glorify and honor God in every way. One of the living messages that you will see throughout 2 Chronicles is when God's people went astray, God used the nations to punish His people. In fact, look in 2 Chronicles 36. And I want you to look at what's said in verse number 17. 2 Chronicles 36. Look at verse number 17. Therefore God brought against them the king of the Chaldeans who killed their young man with the sword in the house of their sanctuary had no compassion on young man or virgin on the age or the week he gave them all into his hand why did god do why did god allow them to do that because god's people kept living in sin they kept rebelling against god they kept turning their back on God and, and living immoral, ungodly lives that were only hurting them and their children. And God had to stop that. It's not as though God wanted to, but to slow the tide of sin and to stop that and to get people back where they needed to be. God sent His people into captivity. He used the nations to punish them. And friend, from that, we realize that sometimes because of our own choices, there are going to be hard consequences. When as a people, as a nation, we go down a path of immorality, we stop, as our nation was once built upon the idea, in God we trust, we stop trusting in God, we stop putting His first, we take Him out of our schools and, and out of our public facilities and God's put on the back burner. Friend, is it going to be any surprise? that our nation goes on a downward spire, a downward trajectory away from God, and that we suffer the consequences of that. As you look to the early chapters again of First or Second Chronicles, we see some powerful lessons from Solomon. And one of the great lessons is when, when, when the temple, which God had commanded them to build, was built, God's presence filled that whole temple. Look at Second Chronicles chapter 5, and I want you to look in verses 12 through 13. 2 Chronicles chapter 5, you see the, the pleasure of God in those who followed His will and how that His presence filled that temple. 2 Chronicles 5, I want you to look at verses 12 through 14. The Bible says, And the Levites who were the singers, all those of Asaph and Heman, uh, and their brethren stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps, and with them 120 priests, sounding with trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, when they lifted up their voices with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For He is good. His mercy endures forever. Watch this. But the house... The house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Can't you imagine what a powerful scene that is? These people have gathered together with a true heart to worship God, to put Him first, to, to build this magnificent temple that, that God desired. And when all that comes together in beautiful harmony, the cloud fills that filled with the presence of Almighty God. What a beautiful picture of God's filling their lives, filling their hearts, and them truly giving themselves to Almighty God. And what's great as you read 2 Chronicles is, we learn throughout the Bible, and 2 Chronicles also illustrates this. These people had a good heart, and God knows people's hearts, doesn't He? Look in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse number 30. Look at what the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, and look in verse number 30. 
David is praying, or Solomon's praying, and he says this of, to God. Then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and give to everyone according to all his ways whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of the sons of men. God knows our hearts. Acts 1 verse 24, Luke chapter 15 verse 6, other places clearly teach God knows what's within the heart of man. John chapter 2, verse 24 through 26. And so if my heart is right with God, if I'm trying to live the way God wants me to, if I'm trying to put first things first, isn't it so encouraging to know God knows your heart, God knows you want to please Him, and that type of heart, that's what God is looking for. What made David a great man of God? He was a man after God's own heart. He, he had the heart to seek what's right and to do it and to put God's truth before all else. Now, as you look through the book of 2 Chronicles, there are a lot of kings who aren't right. There are a lot of things that they did that were wrong. But another practical lesson we're going to learn is when we face the battle, the battles we face in life, just like the battles they faced then, that battle really belongs to God. Look in Acts or 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 15. That's 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I want you to notice what the Bible says about the battle being the Lord's in verse number 15. The Bible says, And he said, Listen, all you of Judah and all you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, because of this great multitude. Watch this now. For the battle is not yours, but God's. You know, the people facing this difficulty, it'd be easy to look at that multitude and look back at Israel and think, There's no way. We're too, we can't do this. We don't have the equipment. We don't have the talent. We don't have the weapons they have. And so when you think about practical lessons, just like from David and Goliath, the battle wasn't David's. It wasn't David's strength. It wasn't David's size. It wasn't David's weapon. In all of that, he was inferior. What made David greater than Goliath? What made the people here greater than their enemies? The battle belongs to the Lord. Friend, let's take a practical lesson from that. In my life and yours, we're all going to face valleys. We're going to face mountains. We're going to face challenges. There's going to be highs and lows. And when the challenges arise, when the difficulties come, when the enemy looks like it's unsurmountable, that you can't beat it, what do you need to remember? The battle is God's. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a servant. I'm just a tool in the hand of God. And if this is the Lord's will, there's nothing anybody can do to thwart that. If I'll let God use me, I'll put myself in His hand, and I'll trust in Him and follow His will. We'll let God win the battles. We'll let God decide who's going to receive the best outcome, and we'll always put our trust in the Almighty. Now, let's notice some lessons from some of the kings that we do find in 2 Chronicles, I want you to see some of the good reforms. There was a lot of evil. There was a lot of idolatry. There was a lot of people who were given over to the pagans and their gods and their immorality. But one man that stands out in 2 Chronicles for sure is King Asa and the good reforms he made. I want you to open your Bible to 2 Chronicles chapter 15, and I want you to see the, the, what Asa did, how he stood up against the evil of his time and did what was right. 2 Chronicles 15. Look at his heart in verse 2. The Bible says, and this is the Spirit of God through Azariah, and he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and all Benjamin, the Lord is with you while you're with Him. If you seek Him, He'll be found by you. But if you forsake Him, He will forsake you. For a long time, Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest, and without the law. Now notice verses 12 through 14. Watch what Asa does. And they entered into a covenant 
to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. And whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel was put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. Asa put in some good reforms. It was hard on some people. Some people didn't want to go along with that. But just like the prophet said, Asa made up his mind. He was going to go back and do what God said. He was going to change things. They were going to institute God's will and they were going to do what was right. Friend, in, in a day and age where there's so many things that are opposed to God, so many things that are opposed to the Bible, when the trajectory of our world looks like it's on a downward spiral, what do we need today? We need people like Asa who are going to stand up and, says, and say, Thus saith the Lord, who are going to speak as the oracles of God. 1 Peter 4.11, who are going to oppose that which is evil. Ephesians 5.11, who are going to contend earnestly for the truth. Jude verse 3, and who are willing to speak God's truth in love. Just like Asa had to go against the tide and against the grain, we've got to stand up and be counted for in the service of Almighty God and to put ourselves in the hope and trust of Jehovah. And so with the encouragement of Asa, let's stay true to his will and let's do what God wants us to do. Then I want you to notice the good heart of Jehoshaphat, another good king in that day and age. Look in 2 Chronicles 17, verses 6 through 10. And I want you to look at the heart of another good king, King Jehoshaphat. 2 Chronicles 17, look in verse number 6. The Bible says, And his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he removed the high places and wooden images from Judah. Also in the third year of his reign, he sent his leaders, ben Hale, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathaniel, and Micaiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. And with them he sent Lehel, Shemaramoth, Jehonathan, Adonijah, Tobijah, and Tobadonijah, the Levites, and with them Elishama and Jehoram, the priest. So they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them when they went throughout all the cities of Judah, and they taught the people. And the fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of that land that were around Judah, so that they did not make war against Jehoshaphat. Look at Jehoshaphat and the good reforms he made also. He gathered everybody up. He said, let's get the Word of God. Let's go around and let's tell it. Let's do what we can. Let's tear down these ungodly places. Let's live good moral lives and do what God wants us to do. And you know, when Asa did that, when Jehoshaphat did that, when Josiah did that, when Hezekiah would go along with that as well, the people always drew closer to God and they were always blessed. Friend today, and I know this is we're, we're sounding this trumpet again, but listen carefully. Just like in the days of Second Chronicles, reform needs to take place. People need to mend their hearts. Joel 2 verse 12. We need to turn our attention back to God and His Word, and we need to seek Him with all our heart so that God will bless our land today. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. I want you to notice something else that happened that was amazing in 2 Chronicles. I want you to see what Jehoiada the priest and King Joash did with some good reforms as well. Look in 2 Chronicles 23, verse number 16. More reforms are made by some of the good kings. And in 2 Chronicles 23, verse 16, look what happens here. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between himself the people and the king, that they should be the Lord's people. And all the people went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They broke in pieces its altars and its images, killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. Also Jehoiada appointed the oversight of the house of the Lord to the hand of the priests, the Levites, whom David had assigned in the house of the Lord to offer burnt offerings of the Lord, as it is written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and singing, as it was established by David. And goes on to tell all that they did. Friend, what I want you to see is Jehoiada, King Joash, it wasn't popular. It wasn't what everybody was doing. In fact, it was contrary to what was popular. But they still insisted that men and women follow God and hold true to Him. They reformed their lives 
and went back to the Word of God and a reformation of people's character and their hearts was so necessary at that time. Now, I want to focus on a couple of good kings as we're going to close out the book of 2 Chronicles. And these two kings, a lot of what they did stands out so well as a reminder today. Let's think about King Hezekiah for just a moment. Good King Hezekiah, look in 2 Chronicles 29, and I want you to notice what he did. This really stands out for the character that he had. 2 Chronicles 29, you'll notice in verse 1 following, he cleanses the temple of God. Verse 3 following, he takes out all the ungodly things, all that was wrong, all that was immoral, all those who are worshiping idols. Then in chapter 29, about verse 20 following, he's going to insist that they restore worship to the way God wanted it to be. And they did that according to the Word of God. And then in chapter 30, they're now going to go back and they're going to restore the Passover as God wanted it to be. And so these three things that were all messed up in the Israelite nation, their temple was full of gross immorality and idolatry and ungodliness, and Hezekiah cleaned house. Get all the ungodly things out of the temple of God. Their worship was way in ways that God didn't want and ask for. It was contrary to His will, and they took the Word of God. And they got worship back right. Then they started observing the Passovers and God, as God wanted them to in their worship. And so Hezekiah, such a, a great king in Israel, cleansed the temple. Friend, when we think about things that need reform today, men and women's lives have got to be where God wants them to be. The impurity, the immorality, the emotionalism, the, the entertainment society, that's all, the, the me society. Friend, that's not what worship is about. Wor Listen carefully to me. Worship is not about me. And it's not about making me feel good. And it's not about making me happy and me, me, me. That's not, no. The people got so caught up in that day and age. And aren't people caught up in that today? Friend, worship God. Psalm 95, verse 6. Those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. John 4, verse 24. And so we need to clean house. We need to restore worship as God wants it to be. And we need to go back to doing things the way God wants us to in the Bible. And then there were the reforms of good King jo Josiah. Open your Bible to 2 Chronicles chapter 34. And I want you to notice what good King Josiah did in reforming things back to the way that they should have been. Look in chapter 34. King Josiah is such a great hero of the Bible. Chapter 34, verse 1 and 2. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. He reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, walked in the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. What did Josiah do? Young people, listen to me. Eight years old, young man, started reigning when he was very young as well. He cleaned house. He got right with God. He went back and started doing what they should have been doing in the Bible all along. Young people can have a great influence for good today. Be an example to the believers. Paul said to Timothy, in, in word and conduct and faith and spirit and love and impurity. You know, Josiah also did some great things in that he found the Word of God and had it reinstituted uh, among the people. Look in chapter 34, beginning in verse number 14. Talking about the things of God. Now when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, watch this, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. Then Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan, the scribe, I found the book of the law of God in its house. Now watch what happens in verse 19. Thus it happened when the king heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes. The king commanded Hilkiah, Ahikam, son of, son of Shaphan, Abdon, son of Micah, all these people, go inquire the Lord for me. He says, concerning the word of the books that is found, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out on us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do according to all that is written in this book. What, what makes Josiah stand out? The Word of God had been lost. It had been in the temple, but they didn't care about it. It had been lost, and they find that, and they read it, and they study it, and they, they tear their hearts and garments, and they have the encouragement of everybody. Let's do 
what God says. Our fathers haven't been doing it. You know, it had to be hard. Their parents, everybody else in their family wasn't following the Bible. And Josiah said, this is God's Word. We're going to do what it says. Friend, we need, we need people today with that same mindset and that same encouragement to seek God's Word, to find God's Word, to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. And when our lives are not in line with the will of God, we don't want to try to change God's Word. We want to amend our lives. We want to change our lives to line up with the way God wants us to be living. Now, the sad statement on Israel is found, and Judah is found at the end of the book. They quit doing this. Josiah made some good reforms. Joash did. Hezekiah, Asa, they all made some good changes. But it didn't stick. Israel eventually got so caught up in sin, they were taken captive. Look in 2 Chronicles 36, and I want you to notice what the Bible says. It isn't much longer after Josiah dies. 2 Chronicles 36, look in verse 15. And the Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them, by his messengers, rising up early and sending them because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Now watch this. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his word, scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people till there was no remedy. And eventually, God's people go into harsh captivity because of this. They're slaves they're treated, mistreated. Their freedom is taken away. Everything they hold dear is destroyed. When all they had to do was stay true to God in the Bible and live like He wanted them to live. Friend, what about us today? What is our trajectory as a people, as a nation in this world today? Are we still putting God first? Are we putting God's Word where it needs to be? Or are we so caught up in other things that sometimes we just don't know even where, the God, where God and His Word are. A lesson we learn from 2 Chronicles is God needs to be first. If not, there are going to be consequences. Friend, we are so glad that you've joined us for our Bible study today. We hope that you'll join us next time as we're going to study more about the Word of God. And may God bless us as we strive to put Him first. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the